morning guys welcome back to the channel today is our second and final last day here in montana we're gonna go rip the soup oh hello <laughs> well guys we're back home now i'm very very terrible about doing any sort of recording when we're not home it just i don't know i feel like it'd be super boring for you guys so i always say i'm gonna do it and then i don't but we're back home now i need to bring my 10 to the shop my 10 is sitting here at the house it is dead battery is dead can i open it with the fob because the battery's dead but then my freaking key doesn't work in the door not sure why something must have came apart in the door so i have to go break into my tent somehow let's see what we can do maybe because it warmed up a bit she'll unlock i don't know no she won't this car only has one keyhole on the driver's door passenger does not have one the factory trunk would i believe but we don't have a factory trunk on it, so let me just try again. If we can get this thing open. Yeah, it does nothing. It's like it's disconnected. So freaking annoying, dude. What else could I do? Break a window? I don't want to fuck up the wrap is the big thing. I really don't want to mess the wrap up. So I have a metal or a wooden spatula to pry the door a little bit. And then I have this metal coat hanger that I bent straight. Let's see what we can do. Bobby's gonna be pissed. Sniper for what? I was trying to prime my door open, the bitch just broke. I cook every meal with this spatula. Well, I'll get you another wooden spatula. I'm gonna need it by tonight. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. I can tape it. Let's tape it. It's like a ornament. Yay, we win, finally. Took about 30 minutes, didn't really mess up the car, maybe a tiny bit, let's see, uh, a little bit of vinyl wrap, black wrap right there, not a big deal. I was so close to just breaking the freaking window, but I'm gonna go to the shop and I'm gonna fix that door lock and then we can work on Jared's car. Let's get old girl fired up first, pop the hood. I brought my little jump pack, which is of course the most handy thing in the world. I'm gonna go ahead and link it down below. I've done an ad for them before and I never run like any promo ads or anything that on a product that I think is shitty. This jump pack is so freaking nice and I use it all the time and it's like 140 bucks, a little spendy, but so worth it for instances like this. Hell yeah, I'm excited. Also, I don't know why I'm going to the shop right now. It's Sunday evening, about 9 p.m. I'll show you how to use it properly. I figured this out recently. So we got our plugged in. Damn, this battery's dead dead. Wait, is this thing dead? Oh, oh, oh. That sounds weird. <laughs> that scared me, even though I knew it was gonna happen. So on the fan take to get 15 or 14 volts, hold down the power and hold down that little light button on the side at the same time, and it'll be like a jump. So it shows my batteries at two volts. Let's hold down the two buttons. 15 volts, ready to fire up. It's been months since this car, car's been fired up, so I'm excited that it started that easy. So we made it to the shop. This car is definitely more fun to drive than I remember. So I should probably start driving it some more. It's so sick. Regardless, tonight's goal of course is to get this Evo 10 check engine light misfire issue figured out. You can fire it up. It runs 100% perfect. It'll idle for 
40 years probably without throwing a check engine light. And then as soon as you rev it up at all, like you hit 2000 RPM, RPMs will come back down to idle. It'll start loping like it's got some S3s in it. It'll throw a check engine light P0017, which is a cam slash crank sensor synchronization code. Did some research online because I've never had that code before. So what we're gonna try is pulling solenoids and cam sensors and crank sensors off this car and putting them on there. So the cam sensors are both very, very easy to remove. One solenoid is easy to remove. The one on the back, the exhaust side, intake side solenoid, a bit of a bitch. So we're gonna save that for last. Let's go swap the solenoid, see if that fixes it. If not, we'll swap parts back to this car and then start trying the cam sensors. If those two don't fix it, then we're gonna have to pull off power steering pumps on both cars, which I do not wanna do and we can swap out the intake solenoid. I don't know what I would do right now if I didn't have another Evo 10. Probably just diagnose it with like my brain, if that makes sense. Next sensor, let's go ahead and get it swapped out. Problem with this is the car has to warm up every single time to throw the code. It doesn't throw it just right off the bat like I wish it would, so now I freaking, now I gotta burn my hands every few minutes, which is no fun. Ow. This thing's duped me like five times now, so just let it run, Let's see what happens. I'm starting to wonder if it's something else not like sensor related. It's so weird because you fire the car up and it's perfect. It doesn't misfire at all. It's 100% good to go. Then as soon as you rev it up, it comes back down and it starts missing. It's probably something really, really easy that I'm just overlooking, but I'm gonna continue on with my plan. Let's swap the rest of the sensors. So I replaced the oil control valve for the exhaust cam, exhaust cam sensor, intake cam sensor, the intake cam, or the oil control valve on for the intake side. Straight pain in the ass to remove. We'd have to pull off the power steering pump, which on a Evo 10 is not fun whatsoever. But the code it's throwing is a bank one sensor, bank one sensor B, which I believe that would be the exhaust, the oil control valve. The solenoid that we've been, that we already swapped out. I am thinking I'm gonna go ahead and check timing real quick, just to double check. But it would make, it wouldn't, it doesn't make any sense because if timing was off, it seems like it would just run rough all the time, right? Not just like when you rev it and it comes back down and it starts to idle rough. But just to get that out of my head, out of the back of my brain, I'm gonna just double check timing. So let's pop the valve cover and uh, get it out top dead center and make sure both cam gears are lined up properly. That's the, that's the thing I wanna do. So 
so I don't see anything weird under the valve cover. The timing is spot on. Next thing we are gonna check, I talked to Exigent Solutions. Ryan over there has been kind of helping me out. It is their motor in the car. I'm not saying, of course, it's not their issue, but it's their block. Um, and they're very, very, very intelligent people. He said, check sensors, we already did all that. Data log exhaust MyVec positioning versus actual in Evo scan. So Jared has my tuning laptop right now. He is on his way to the shop. We are gonna hook this thing up to Evo scan and do what Ryan said. We're gonna test it out. And uh, I don't really know what I'm looking at there. So I guess we'll just see what it shows on the screen. And if actual versus, what was it actual versus target? Um, yeah, MyVec positioning versus actual. If those are different. Maybe it's something with the exhaust cam gear, which that is not very fun to swap out. We have to pull the timing cover back off and whatnot. Damn, let's hope that's not it. Put the car back together, went ahead, got it up in the air, pulled out the crank sensor. Crank sensor looks fine. Um, checked all the wiring, all the wiring looks fine. I also looked at the, I believe you'd call it the reluctator ring, the ring on the crank, which triggers, which is the pretty much the trigger for the crank position sensor. Maybe that got bent or misaligned. That looks perfectly fine as well. So Jared just pulled up the laptop. Let's see what we can do. You ready to fix this hunk of shit or what? Yeah. Is this, so if it is my vec, it, is that, what the it's hell is probably it? probably something. It's like, it, is my vec like just. It's, it's VTEC for an Evo okay. 10, Evo 9, Evo 10. How do, you, how do you get the timing cover without pulling the motor? Very tedious. Cause it's Work. sandwiched up on the end. Yeah, yeah, it's a bitch, but I've done it. All right, let's hook up and see what we got. Fuck this car. My VEC target exhaust is point, negative 0. 0.6, and when it goes all fucky like that, it's negative 35 degrees. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. So I don't know what that means. I'm gonna send this log to people that are smarter than me. I'm gonna go ahead and say something with your My VEC's a little sus. It's negative silly. 35 degrees, huh? Sounds good though. Well, if you don't, if you like it like that, we'll just leave it. Something tells me that's problematic long term. Too bad they're overseas or overseas on the East Coast. Yeah. So Same. I doubt Ryan's gonna get back to me tonight. And I'm definitely not gonna just swap a cam sent or a exhaust cam gear tonight and hopefully that fixes it. It probably will, but that's a fuck ton of work. Well shit. Yeah, negative So I think I'm looking at this right. This is a log. EX VVT target. Come over here, negative 0.6. EX VVT actual. Come over here, negative 35. She built. Wow, she very built. So bad news, probably bad news. I got a hold of Ryan from Exigent. He says it's probably the cam gear. I talked to Bader on the phone. He also says it's probably a cam gear. And Bader brought up a really good point with sucking in all the water, bending the rod. Also probably put a shit ton of pressure on that cam gear, my VEC wise. So we're probably gonna pull the motor again. Well, Jared, for the, uh, fuck all this. I'm leaving it up to you now. <laughs> um, what I'm thinking though, I just don't want to put a new cam gear on it and then have the same issue. So I'm going to pull the valve cover real quick. Again, double check everything. But if I do have to pull the timing cover, I think it'd be much easier just to drop the subframe and engine and trans and transfer it all out at the, to the, out of the bottom of the car, lift the car up, pull the timing cover off that way. Because if you come here real quick, if you don't know Evos, the timing cover is wedged in between the engine, right? in the goddamn frame rails. And that's a whore and a half. I mean, I like whores, but not whores and halves. Just only one whore. But yeah, let's pull the valve cover again. I'm just gonna double check, see if I see any actual like visible damage on the cam gear. And if I have to pull the motor, then you can see me crying at the top of a cliff. Along with Jared's car that I'm gonna push off the cliff. I'll show you my complete running Severely built motor, bro. You want it? Deal. 15K. <laughs> All right, Jared, start naming off really stupid shit. Sometimes Bobby does that and it'll just be like, oh. I don't know. Vacuum leak, that ground wire. How do you check the grounds? Uh, like the dumbest thing in the world. Something's not connected. Sometimes when Bobby says stupid shit, you rip like, the harness.
Yeah, I wish we could just start it with the golf cover off and then watch it do fucking shit. Yeah. Here's your tool. Go turn the crank and I will look visually. Um, let me go the light. Nothing weird yet. Yeah, I don't see any cracks on the housing or anything. Something's obviously going on, bro. Uh, probably pull the motor it is. I'm, you know why? The main, only reason for it is just like in the damn time cover sealed properly. Yeah. Trying to seal that shit up inside the car is a bitch, bro. Uh, but I can't imagine because it's all like, how the fuck would you? You can't, you can do it. Space, bro. Yeah, I did you know, it on... Like, you just sit there and go like this. Just like, pretty much, yeah. Just thing, you gotta finger fuck it. Finger blind. Blind, yeah. <laughs> blind. Yeah. Once you do it enough, you get pretty good at it. <laughs> I debated pulling the engine. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna pop that timing cover off real quick and take a look at the gear while it's off the car and hopefully fix it. So you're leaving me with your shitty car. Jared's a lazy ass. He's going home. It's 10 p.m. His mom, he's making him go to bed. So we got the entire car torn down, cam gear out, cam gear disassembled. I thought for sure we were gonna see some major carnage in here. I don't really see much going on. There's a little bit of like, a little bit of uh, something hitting there maybe, but I don't think that's enough to cause any issues. The housing looks fine. This piece looks fine. All the little, whatever you'd call these things. I'm not really sure what these are called to be honest. Little bushings, I guess. I mean, some, some wear, but I don't know. It seems fine to me. So that's got me worried. I hope the cam gear is the issue. If it's not, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I guess we'll put it back together tomorrow. I would do it tonight, but I still, number one, have to go train. I have to go work out. It's already midnight. I haven't went gone to the gym today. Gotta go do that. And we have to fix this thing. So I'm gonna tear that door panel off real quick, figure out why the door lock is not working. I really don't want to, I really don't want to have to break into this thing again in case the battery dies in the future. So let's get her fixed. So it must have been disconnected ever since we vinyl wrapped this car. Very simple mistake. There's a little rod. It's going to be impossible to show. Way down in there. Little rod that comes off the door lock that was misaligned. So we got it aligned and now she works fine. Beautiful. All right. At least we got one Evo fixed. Hopefully Jared's car is just that cam gear. Even though it looks fine internally, maybe somehow it's just it was acting up. I don't really know how those things work, to be honest. Hopefully that freaking fixes it, because that was a lot of work to pull this thing apart. Sad. Gonna wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out, my friends. I'll see you guys tomorrow.